Identity is something we put out there consciously or unconsciously. And the truth about identity is that they seem to see us, people around us seem to see us some way, even if you want them to see you that way or not. So today I have with me a special guest and a friend of mine, a success coach, Kingsley Ime in the house. Can you please welcome Kingsley to me? Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone for listening, for tuning in, for downloading in case you downloaded this episode or <laughs> yeah. in case you're, you're listening. I almost said watching because I'm used to being on TV and the rest of them, but thank you for being a part of this um, conversation, whether you are in your car, heading to work, coming back from work, heading to school, coming back from school, church, wherever, whether you are just relaxing and you're just part of us. And I want to say thank you for joining. My name is Kingsley Ime. Like my friend has rightly said, I'm Kingsley Ime. I'm a success coach, a business development consultant, and of course, the CEO of Kingspire Resources. Oh, that's great. And you know, it would have been a nice one to even have a video <laughs> recording of this, but we just consider yeah, that Yeah, sure, we, we, sure. So thank, thank you. you. <laughs> it's it's really a really great pleasure. So one thing I want to say now is, you know, I believe uh, being a success coach and even a CEO and all that must have come out of maybe experiences of a passion because I think we see you now as this person. So as there was there anything even before now that shaped you to be who you are? Oh yes, oh yes. Um, I would dedicate who I am today to two experiences two personalities on unfortunately or yeah unfortunately they are late today the first one is my father um this is april uh, by this recording this is in 2022 uh, my father passed on this is 21 years and uh, that experience was a pivotal for me my father was i mean he's one of the best man i've ever um, come to know right he's one of the best right and um he showed so much care, love uh, towards me and my siblings. Um, but when he passed on, responsibility just woke me up into a path of um, the journey that I am today, talking success and helping a lot of individuals um, in different global platforms across the world to um, take their journey into success. So when my father passed on, um, necessity and life uh, beckoned on me and so I began to think of what I want out of my life. What was my dream? I didn't know about that. So uh, the passing out of my father left me with my mom, a widow, and my two younger siblings. And my mom had to be the breadwinner taking care of us. Um, that led to me not being able to go to school when my classmates were already in school. Uh, and that by then, we're talking about college and, mm -hmm. and then university. So you know i couldn't go then so those times i was at home in fact i stayed at home for eight years i didn't i couldn't gain admission into school and so because of that i had to think of other things to do and in the process of thinking of other things to do i got um welcomed into a loving arms of my very dear friend may he so rest in peace um none other than my my mentor i don't know where to classify him today as a mentor, a brother, a coach, a friend, a senior brother, a father. He played all those roles. Late Mr. Udeme Rufus. Udeme Rufus. So Udeme Rufus um, welcomed me in. Um, he had this lifestyle of living like, permit me to say, like a foreigner, like a white man, you know. And his English was always um, eloquent in communication. His life was very simple. He was a lover of books. He never told me to pick a book on personal development to read. But you know, when you fall in love with someone, you fall in love with what the person does and it easily influences you. So I love this style of living. I love the simplicity. I love his uh, finesse. I love his way of um, growing and wanting to do more and grow. So um, by connecting and getting close to him, spending more time with him, um, I, I love the way, particularly the way he, he usually arranges books in his... Um, in his library so one day um he brought out a book mm -hmm. start with what you have from where you are by praise george one long 
one long standing author nigerian author that was already into book publishing when a lot of us was not into that so cut the story short that was where the journey of my influence into going into becoming a success coach started so i read that book and i started reading a couple of more books and i decided that since i wasn't able to go to school when my uh, friends and my, my my peers were already in school i decided that okay let me be reading books so that if i could meet with them somehow somewhere in the future i'd be able to communicate with them you understand what i mean so i started reading books mm-hmm. i read a lot of books i read books from les brown which is today my hero and my role model i read books from um books on leadership from john maxwell books on entrepreneurship i read books from jack anfield books from anthony robbins book from um, brian tracy one of my favorite and a whole lot so in the process of course Doc, dr miles monroe so in the process of reading these books i didn't know what i was doing it was personal development so i began to understand things like vision i began to understand dreams from a different perspective because while growing up um we understood dream as when you sleep at night and then you have you know <laughs> you have the drama of having an experience while you are asleep that was the only way i understood dream but reading these books made me to understand that there is another mm. definition for dream where you have to um, look into the future and see the kind of life you want to become. So in that process, it made me question, mm. that's the discovery part of me right now that I'm sharing. It made me question things like, mm. what do I know how to do best? What am I passionate about? What are my mm. talents? Right? So these questions began to lead me to a mm. part of knowing that, oh, I could really teach i have a gift of teaching and i have a skill of speaking even though it was at the raw stage you know so that that made me go into that passion of how do i use my words how do i use my my skill and my talent to help another person become successful so i usually used to say like seven eight years ago when i started this journey that if it means for me to open the door to make to help other people succeed then i will gladly open the door if it means for me to back somebody to cross a canal, right? To cross a drainage so that the person can succeed, I'd gladly do it because I find fulfillment in doing that. So these were some of the circumstances and the experiences that uh, made me go into success coach. And the day I decided to call myself a success coach, I never knew there was anything like success coach. I just knew I love this. I love the part of success. Mm -hmm. And at my level, I wanted to do something to help my fellow young people and even people older than me have success in their project, in their journey, in whatever they are doing. So I said, you know what? I'm going to be a call this. I'm going to be a success coach. And I started calling myself a success coach. Then I went on the internet to do some research. And that's when I discovered that my favorite um, author, Jack Anfield, is a success coach. And he wrote a book success principles so i have almost all of jack anfield's book i have his book on and chicken soup for the soul i have success principles by jack anfield i have um how to go from where you are to where you want to be 25 principles that can help you succeed in life so that was um in summary the circumstances and experiences that um led me into the path that i am today and i could really see a level of intentionality in all these things because you could have said that oh I was, uh, I lost my father at a young age and you relax and do not do all these things. But eventually you, you built yourself to the point whereby you could stand irrespective of what you went through. And was there any point in time whereby um, losing your father and not being able to go to school affected your self-image? Because I know this is just natural. You're seeing other mates of yours going to school, doing well for themselves and you're there reading books believing in yourself that i'm still going to achieve something irrespective of what's going on was there any point in time where it affected yourself absolutely it did absolutely it did it affected it affected my self-esteem i'm um well i'm being vulnerable right now but i'm i'm a very emotional person right so because i'm very emotional um when my father passed on you know the 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 thought of living a life as a as a fatherless child let me use that word being fatherless affected me negatively at some point and um not being able to go to school when my mates were going to school 
oh, it did affect me negatively at some point. But like I said, with the help of Udeme Rufus, who was always there to show his care, to show his concern, to show his love, I had to now channel that experience into the positive right so i told myself you know what mm -hmm. since my mm -hmm. my classmates in secondary school mm -hmm. my my all my my friends in high school had gone on to college mm -hmm. i couldn't go to college at that time so these experience of losing my father came started first negatively mm -hmm. The, vo the vacuum of not having a father, father, father to father you, mm -hmm. the vacuum of not having, um, having a mother that is not able to pay your tuition fee mm -hmm. to go into college from high school, it, 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 it came on me negatively at some point. But I intentionally turned it around. I said, you know what? Because I used to hide from my colleagues, mm -hmm. my high school friends, when they call for a reunion. You know, high school yeah. reunion. <laughs> Definitely. You know, <laughs> so so and some of some of my high school um, friends were especially the ladies of course the ladies always get married first mm, yeah. so they were getting married so the high, my high school friends would now call say hey guy come let's let's hang out let's go for our friends um weddings that way we can have a reunion right mm, mm. but i would always lie yes yeah, i would always lie in form of an excuse that oh you know i'm working and because i'm working i don't have i don't have time to come it was a lie i wasn't yeah i was working but it didn't stop mm, me from going yeah. so i now intentionally channeled it so i said you know what at least if i can go to school like they do i should be able to communicate like they do mm. i should be able to speak good english and understand what they were saying because I I felt like being in high school, the kind of English you speak at and the level of graduating from high school and the kind of English and communication level you have as a college student is different, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that plunged me into going into reading books. Mm -hmm. But voila, that was a vista of opportunity for me. Yeah. So reading books began to challenge me. And you know, self-help books, success book, leadership book, entrepreneurship books, um, um, business books, you know, all these are not like the fiction. No offense to our non uh, fiction yeah. writers, right? I love fiction yeah. books as well, but no offense to them. Yeah. These were books written by people sharing their life experiences. Yeah. And I tell you what, Les Brown's story was the turning point for me. Yeah. So reading Les Brown's book and listening to him, seeing the experience he went through, yeah. and I felt like, oh, you know what? Les Brown went through some stuff worse than I am. Mm. If Les Brown could do it, I can do it. Mm. I read books of people who were addicts, who were drug addicts, who were serial killers, who made terrible mistakes in life and went into prison. Mm. You know, but right in prison, they got some some sort of an encounter and they they decided to change mm. and they came out as a condemned ex-convict but they turned their life around and they were making success out of their experience i said if these guys can do it mm -hmm. i can do it also so that was the turning point for me so of course intentionality came into play mm -hmm. and also did you get everything right at once because i think that's always the usual thing you know you you were intentional about working on all these things but you know there are times you're working on things and it's not even coming true like it's not looking like it for you, did it, mm, did it all come I, true? Like, you speaking no, now, was it something Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I believe there, there will be a lot of people still working on themselves. And one thing I've always said about identity is it's not just one thing you become yeah. at once. It's something you still continue to become. Your experiences shape on ah. new things. Yeah. And you can be seen yeah. as someone that doesn't love money now. And when the money comes, <laughs> we see a different <laughs> perspective of you. So, one thing I'm saying is we continue to get better as usual. And of course, we can always yeah. learn from these experiences. Yeah. Did it just come easy yeah. or you had to be intentional, as you've said earlier, but you had to no. just stay there, like get it, it, it. It didn't come out. It didn't, no, it didn't come all, it didn't come all clear. Hmm. Absolutely not. Today I have, um, I have spoken to millions of people. Hmm. Um, between the last three years, I've spoken, I've, I've, I've done training and I've spoken to over a million people mm -hmm. via the different radio talk shows, interviews that I grant yeah, right. and radio business talk shows that I grant on high traffic radio stations and even satellite TV stations, right? And some, um, class some people, I, I thought I saw some of your Of course, training. virtual classes, a lot of virtual classes. As a matter of fact, I'm just coming in from another city where I went to do a training for them and I just came riding, right? Mm -hmm. Now, 
I usually tell people who are meeting me or hearing uh, um, those of you that are listening to me for the first time, it never came out all planned out. No, no, no. It didn't come out all perfect. No, I was as confused as you are listening to me right now. Mm-hmm. At so many times at, the, at some point in my life, I was confused because I, I, I kind of discovered that I have passion for so many things. Mm-hmm. I have talent for so many things. I have interest for so many things. How do I now narrow it down to the ones that i find fulfillment in mm-hmm. so it didn't happen odd at once mm-hmm. now we're talking about identity i wasn't able to identify it all at once it came as a process mm-hmm. so i discovered i love dancing and i could dance at some point i i love music but i knew as i when it comes to music i am not going to be a musician mm-hmm. but i love music i love hip-hop i love rap right mm-hmm. i loved it i discovered i love to teach and i could teach i discovered um i love business but I had to sit at, at the process of identifying my path. Mm-hmm. I had to ask myself, I listed out all the things I can do. And you can do same if you're watching, if you're listening to us right now. Sorry, if you're listening to us right now and you are confused on identity, sit down and write a list of things you can do. I didn't say things you know how to do, mm-hmm. things you can do, mm-hmm. things you you can do whether you're perfect on it or not, which is what I did. Mm -hmm. So I listed them down and I now said on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, one being the lowest, how do I rate these things I could do? Mm -hmm. And I rated them. And I now cut off the ones that are from five to five and above. Mm -hmm. Again, I took the five and above. I said on a scale of one to 10, Mm -hmm. which of these gives me more fulfillment? Mm -hmm. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. And I began to streamline them. I streamlined them until I got to my core three, Mm -hmm. which is entrepreneurship, right? Mm -hmm. Business, which is speaking as an inspirational speaker that I am. Mm -hmm. And of course, coaching, which is the success coaching part. Mm -hmm. And I've helped a lot of lots of um, young people across the world. Mm -hmm. I've helped them discover their path. I've helped them identify their journey and run with it. And I I always say that discovery is not a destination, Mm -hmm. it's a journey. Mm-hmm. It's an unending journey mm-hmm. because you might discover one thing you are doing right now. Mm-hmm. And at some point you were excited about it, but over time, the excitement ran out. No, it's not that you are confused. No, you have outgrown that stage. So if you have experienced that before, I have experienced it. At some point, I was into motivational speaking mm-hmm. and I wasn't finding complete fulfillment anymore. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, I want something more. So I moved into becoming an inspirational speaker, using my story and my experience to inspire people, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, and I said I didn't just want to speak to people. I wanted to show people how they could also be able to build a skill Mm -hmm. and out of their talent and their passion to create businesses out of it. You could see how the yearning kept taking me to the next Mm -hmm. level, to the next level, to the next Mm -hmm. level. Yeah, so that I didn't get them all at once. Of course, there were lots of individuals that helped along the path. Um, I began to ad- identify the place of mentorship, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I discovered the place. Of course, mentorship, um, what's his name? Jack Anfield's book helped me a lot. In fact, Jack Anfield's book helped me to understand that I don't need someone to be older than me to be my mentor, mm-hmm. someone younger than me, so long as they have achieved the mm-hmm. dream I aspire to achieve, so long as they, have a- they are at the destination I am aspiring to get to. Mm-hmm they can be my mentor mm-hmm. and more younger people have mentored me than older people in the past four years of my life and it has been a wonderful journey so the place of mentorship the place of openness to learning from even uh, people of my same mates right mm-hmm. has helped a lot and of course paying for coaching sessions yeah. has also helped a whole lot and and yeah so that's it yeah and i think it's also important that we just have to take notes that uh, mentorship can come in different ways, just as you've said, even reading someone's book and following the person yeah. in total. But it's always good when you have maybe one-on-one mentorship where you can also ask your questions and get clarity on issues. And something I noticed from what you've just said is sincerity. Like you are sincere with yourself. It, this dancing Absolutely. is not for me. So do I love doing <laughs> it or I just know that no. This is not what I've been called to. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people going maybe into music or maybe even motivational speaking and all those things. And they know yeah. that it's really not for them, but they just want to do it. So understand, just find ab- out. Ab- absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you see, you see, I'm not cutting you, but you mm-hmm. see, um, you can deceive everybody, but you cannot deceive yourself. Mm-hmm. 
And when you come to that point where you know that you cannot deceive yourself, you are the part of discovery. Mm-hmm. Because you can never discover yourself until you come to the you come to accept the truth. I know how to do this, I don't know how to do this. So there's a place of joy and there's a place of happiness. Happiness is temporary, joy is longer. I call it is eternal. Joy is eternal. Happiness. I there was one time I was a DJ. Mm-hmm. It's still part of the identity journey. Mm. I used to go out with a DJ friend of mine who taught me how to um, how to do this jockey thing. And I used to do it and I loved it. But I realized that it was always momentarily. Mm. So I could have happiness at the point where I'm doing my DJ job and people are dancing and I'm dancing as well and the excitement is there. But after the party, I felt empty again in my spirit, mm. in my heart. So I knew that this was just not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. All right. So it's important we come to that point. And of course, we need to also understand the place of who's a role model and who's a mentor. Mm. Um, I always say, and I and and that and and I and I believe in what I'm standing to say today. Mm. Not everybody is your mentor. Not everybody is your role model. Mm. If you have not had a clear and direct conversation, mm. an established relationship with someone, I'm, I'm I'm not sure the person is qualified yet to fully be your mentor. Mm. If you read their books and listen to their tapes, they could be your role model. Mm. So till today. I listen to Les Brown every day via YouTube, via um, podcast, via his live programs. And of, of course, his books. But today, he's still my role model. Until I engage that relationship. Because mentorship is a relationship. It's a kind of relationship. And today, thank God for um, virtual platforms. We could get mentorship virtually, right? So that's just what I, I wanted to chip in. But yes, like you said, it's important we come to that place of honesty. Being honest with ourselves and telling ourselves, man, this is the one I can do. This is the one I cannot do. This is the one that is giving me fulfillment. A lot of people are living people, are borrowed dreams. Many people are living borrowed dreams. So, oh, you're listening to Kingsley on this podcast today. And you're like, wow, I love the way this guy is flowing. I love his communication skills. I think I want to be an inspirational speaker. There's a place for, don't get me wrong, there's a place for going into dreams based on getting inspired by someone. But let such a decision connect with you finding fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So if you are wowed by the fact that Eminem can rap and raps very well and you want to go into being a hip-hop um, artist being an, a, a musician if by the time you get yourself into that journey at some point the internal instinct in you does not find fulfillment in hip-hop and music mm. you need to be honest and tell yourself the truth and keep finding your path while you are at the present uh, journey that you are in mm. So that that's important. So one one thing that I'm now looking at is okay, there are situations whereby this is the way I want to be seen. I want to be seen as maybe a musician and I know I have what it takes, like maybe the gift or mm-hmm. this is the way I want to be addressed. But there are situations whereby you lack maybe the finances to just appear that same way. Maybe you want to just change the mm. way you appear, maybe the way you dress. But you don't even have enough mm. money just to to look the way you've been thinking. Or even being a musician, you know, if you're just singing. I think social media helps these yeah. days though. But before the advent <laughs> of social media, if you've been singing and no yeah. one is even listening to you, you can't go beyond your bedroom. So And you don't even have that financial... Is there a way to just go about that? Like, you know this is what I want to do. You know I have a capacity to to even achieve this mm. but it seems like yeah. there is a limiting factor somewhere do you have a way we well, can... well um y- yeah of course of course see number one thing is that we become who we think about most of the time mm. you first become within mm. before it manifests without mm. so for you to become the person of your dream You must first become that person internally. Mm. And that can only happen in the place of developing your mind. Mm. And you only develop your mind by feeding your mind with the right information. Mm. And the right information comes by intentionally acquiring the right knowledge. Mm. When when you receive, when you take in knowledge, you are acquiring information. Mm. When you apply the knowledge you are becoming transformed because the acquisition, sorry, the application of the knowledge will bring transformation. Mm -hmm. So 
when you are you find your pl- yourself in the place of limitation of not being able to be the person you want to be because of financial constraint first thing first build yourself build your capacity build your mental capacity thank god for social media today when i started right um there weren't much of a social media or if there were it was still at the early stage where a lot of us didn't know how to go about it so for me what i used to do was that i would attend a lot of seminars seminars around my environment that are free so i would be in the vehicle with every other person on a public public transportation mm-hmm. right but i would be reading the signage on a billboard on the roadside mm-hmm. far ahead back in the days if you're having a handbill like a flyer a physical flyer mm-hmm. even if you don't want to give me i will call you please ma'am can i get one of those your flyers i want to read because i was hungry mm-hmm. looking for where to improve myself and i didn't have money to attend the paid event so i looked out for the free event in my neighborhood mm-hmm. trust me there are free events there are free classes there are free opportunities to learn stuff mm-hmm. that you can pay that you would not be able to afford to pay for at the meantime mm-hmm. all you've got to do intentionally look out for it i mean probably you want to go into music and you need to take a voice voice training and you can't afford 20 dollars or 100 dollars to pay for voice training mm-hmm. you could go talk to them and say you know what i want to be a musician but i know i have a terrible voice but i have the passion for it and i know this is going to help me become fulfilled mm-hmm. can i work for you one hour every day mm-hmm. and in turn you give me free lessons mm-hmm. so that could be a bargaining chips you could say can i go on um on youtube and check out videos that teaches people on voice training. Are there podcasts that can help me train myself on voice training? Now I have learned it on my own. There's a place of having a coach. I need a coach to help me, you know, put the pieces together of the things I've learned. And I can't afford this coach. I could still reach out to the coach and say, coach, I want you to coach me on, on voice training, on, on voicing, but I don't have the money for it right now. Is there a way that I could work temporarily, right, mm. to make that happen. And that's important. Like, there is always a way around it if you really search for it. Like, you can always get a solution Absolutely. to those things that you even think they are of big deal. Like, one thing I've noticed in life is sometimes we think something is of a great big deal, like it's of a big deal until mm. maybe when you find out more about that thing and you see that, oh, this thing is actually achievable if I put my mind in it. So mm. just take those little steps, mm. even trying to search out, check YouTube, check other places. And of course, there is always someone even ready to help if you if you put yourself out there to receive help. Absolutely. Now, just speaking of social media generally, and this is, I just need um, a little clarification as regards this social media of a thing. There is a great help with social media these days. Like you can always reach out to people. You can always even get to learn things on social media. There are a lot of new recipes and all. But I still believe there is a great effect of social media. I I had a discussion with a friend not quite long. uh, And he was talking about the effect of social media on his identity and how it affected the way he was seeing himself like if he doesn't have enough likes he sees himself as not so liked by people around so the question is uh i think there are few people who's just posting because of attention and there are few people also strategizing what do you think about the social media social media at large and its effects on this generation and maybe how to properly put it to use all right okay so fantastic um social media i can tell you for a fact that social media um social media is like it's like money Mm. money is neutral in its state Mm. money becomes good money in the hands of the person that uses it Mm. if you if you have money say 200 dollars and you use it to buy drugs Mm. money that money was neutral in your hand it is the decision you made with the money 
that determines the outcome you will experience. Of course, if you're into drugs and you're listening to us right now, please try and get help and don't get addicted to drug abuse because the money, the $200 you use to buy drug, to purchase drug, hard drugs, substance, and you abuse yourself is killing you. But you can use the same $200 to go buy food for yourself and pay for courses and subscribe to some platforms where you could get knowledge that can help increase your skill sets that can also at the long run increase the chances of you getting a job so it's the same 200 dollars but doing different things based on the decision of the person that is holding it and those decisions turns around to affect such an individual positively or negatively social media when it comes to identity can be damaging but can also become a powerful tool to leverage on. Mm. I just got off the phone with a friend of mine. And this is someone that both of us, we are like accountability partner to each other. Mm. Like we know our paths. We are already succeeding at some level. But the pressure of social media still gets to us at some point. Mm. And sometimes we take a pause. And this is me being honest with you. Mm. So social media can make you... the, the Let's look at... Let me look at it on both ways the negative side of social media. Mm. Social media has brought a lot of distraction to ma- to our generation mm. because you find out that a lot of people are addicted to social media. They can't stay for five, some people can't even stay for 20 minutes mm. without going on Facebook to check if somebody has liked their post, <laughs> to check if somebody has liked their picture, mm. to check if somebody, how many views they've gotten on their um, WhatsApp status, their Telegram and the, and the rest of them or their Facebook and Instagram reels, get me? So that's a distraction in itself because physically you cannot concentrate for a long time. So that can become the negative part of social media. Social media has also caused a lot of depression to people because you see people taking pictures of being on their car, sorry, being in their car or get uh, starting their new office or, you know, a new shoe, a new Ro- Rolex watch. But what you don't know is that what if they borrow the wristwatch to take the pictures? What if they, the place they took the picture selfie, that office space is actually where they went to apply for an interview? And they don't even own anything there. So that's the negative part where social media has also come in. It has brought a lot of comparison. And when you feel like you are not living up to the billing or the ex- the the, the um, activity of the people you're comparing yourself with, it can bring depression. Mm-hmm. Thirdly, social media has also brought in um, social media has also brought in some level of envy to mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Like people envy you know each other. So that's a negative part. How do you cure that in the process of identity? You have to be deliberate with the kind of people you connect with on social media. Mm. That's why I love social media because there's something called block button. Mm. Mm. You can block people. I love Facebook. You can unfriend somebody and the person doesn't know you have unfriended. Mm. <laughs> so you have to be intentional about the kind of people that you connect with on Facebook. When I went on Facebook for the first time, I was only connecting with people who are successful. Mm. I looked for them, people who are doing, so if they mention your name for anything success, I will connect with you because I know that you are, your activity is meaningful. So I want to see people who are successful in a path mm. and I learn from them. So rather than, rather than me, right? Rather than me, um, um, comparing myself as per trying to achieve what they have achieved. Mm-hmm. I see myself learning the path that they took, mm-hmm. knowing that nobody ever have success overnight, mm-hmm. but over time. Mm-hmm. So I use, you can now use social media as a leverage to yourself who have decided to take a part in becoming a chef mm-hmm. to connecting with other successful chefs Mm. and going down, down, down to digging deep to reading their journey, their stories of where they began, how they did what they did, the challenges they faced Mm. and learn from that. You can now use social media as a tool of leveraging to connecting with people that you would ordinarily not be able to get into their office Mm. Mm. because you have to book appointment, but you can reach to them. You can now use social media as a means of also you spreading your your message, getting people to know that this is what you do and what you stand for. Mm. And A, 
every every freaking person today i don't want to use the word like gary v <laughs> but gary v says every freaking person today was once a person that started on social media with zero follower mm-hmm. they had nobody follow them they didn't have anybody like their post mm-hmm. i i used to post every week and nobody would like my post mm-hmm. see let me tell you if 10 people like your post i can assure you that 25 to 50 people have seen the post mm-hmm. what do you want do you want like or do you want people to see mm-hmm. at the beginning point you want people to see you because people need to see you consistently then they will like you once they like you they will be able to trust you and do business with you so do not put yourself under undue pressure to want to command 2000 likes no just keep building step by step use it as a platform of learning be very selective of the people that you accept friend requests or connect with if you connect with most people for the emphasis of having followership and you realize that some set of individuals on your social media connections are toxic and negative mm. you can you are you feel very free to to unfollow them feel very free to block them mm. and follow the right people mm. i think using it as a platform of learning is so important and as a friend also mentioned absolutely a few episodes back he, he said something about linkedin most times you see someone achieving something but you forget to even check the timeline between what he achieved mm. last time and this new one but you're just quick to say that exactly. oh, this is what he has done and i haven't done it but it took him also a few mm. times to even achieve that if you take time to even look at his timeline you will see what he has done so if you understand that it's also a learning place you just go there to learn and see what people are doing how can i also achieve things like this uh, instead of comparing yourself as you've said i think it helps in uh in the long run it goes a long way and yeah. uh, can you just give us your final thoughts on identity and what would you av- advise someone that is finding it difficult to to see himself in the right way like you know someone with a very low self esteem believing that i don't have a lot to achieve here yeah okay so i'm going to give for free what i do and if you want more mm. you can connect with me for yeah. the coaching session mm. so there are three basic param- par- primary ways of um the ident of, of going through the identity journey successfully number one identifying your purpose or your place of assignment can come in three tiers mm. Num- and a is your talent your talent can be a pointer to your purpose mm. i didn't say your talent is mm. it can be a pointer to your purpose your talent and your gift it can be a pointer to your purpose mm. number two, your passion can be a pointer to your purpose mm. number three, your skill can be a pointer to your purpose one out of these three will definitely lead you to your place of identifying your purpose identifying your 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 vision and your dreams in life mm. and of course as a business developer i will always say that then when you have identified your passion or your talent or your or your mm. skill you need to look for ways with which you can create businesses around it right first and foremost what are you talented in what is your talent what can you do easily that other people find it difficult to you to do can you create content and write easily and other people struggle to do it can you sing easily while others are struggling can you um cook easily different recipes you don't even need to know the recipe for too long you just saw it for the first time and the next uh, minute you are pre- you're making the meal come out successfully can you do that mm-hmm. if you can do it then that could be a pointer to your talent and that could be a direction to what your life purpose could be number two, passion what are you so passionate about you love this thing you could do this thing and time will elapse i just checked the time we've had this conversation now and it's as if we just still started mm-hmm. i could go on and on and on and we have conversations like this because it's my passion mm-hmm. in speaking what can you do that even if people don't pay you you find mm-hmm. joy doing it that could be a pointer to your place of identity in terms of your purpose mm. right and then number three, what are you extremely skilled at i tell people that plumbing is not a gift from god mm. nobody was born into becoming a plumber mm. 
mm. right? Mm. Nobody was born into becoming a carpenter. You develop those as skills. Mm. Do you get what I mean now? Mm. So what are some of the exceptional skills that you have? Um, I know in, in overseas, skating is a big deal, right? Yeah, yeah. Skating could be a big deal. You know, and other ups, abstract things can be a big deal. But if you become excellently skilled at it, you can that can be a pointer to your purpose. Now, let me balance it. Somebody could be saying, but how does skating become a big deal to my purpose? How does skating help me live my purpose? I say if you're excellent at skating, you could you could be going for competitions and become a, a fantastic athlete that is so successful that number one, it brings money to you in abundance. It brings fame to you in abundance, of course, and it makes you become famous. Now, the money that you have received can now become a tool for which you can say, okay, I'm going to do a charity work in helping to send kids out of school to school because they couldn't pay their tuition fee, scholarship programs, healthcare programs. Now, you could see that that skill of being a, skate, a skater, if I may use that word, that knows how to skate very well, pushed you into going into different international and global competitions, which you won and you now became successful financially, right? Mm -hmm. And you were famous and you got a, and you bagged a lot of endorsement deals mm -hmm. that now brought so much money to you that you went for that to say, you know what? I can't spend all this money myself. I need to look for a charitable cost to go into. <laughs> and be, through this skating, you are now creating massive impact with helping uh, people become better helping the environment become better with the resources that you have been able to amass through your talent and your skills. So guys, everyone listening to me right now, please do not uh, be discouraged. Even if you're 40 years and you are still struggling with knowing what your purpose is or identity crisis, you should continue on the journey. Remember the famous story of Ray Kroc, Ray Kroc of KFC started KFC, I think at 64, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. and it became highly successful at 74, if I'm not mistaken as well, right? Mm -hmm. So, so long as you don't give up on the discovery of your journey, keep going, you will keep unraveling and knowing yourself as you go better. The sweet thing about the discovery journey or identity journey is that you will not, you will never be able to discover, or let me not use the word never, you may not likely be able to discover your destination from the start, yeah. but it would keep unraveling itself on different phases, different stages as you keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, just like you can't become a graduate of college, you can't graduate from college from day one you started school. You have to go into kindergarten from there, you go to prom, from the, the low level to high school, from high school to now getting admitted into college, you know, and just like that, like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but then, of course, I do a lot of coaching as a success coach. I take people um, through this journey and I've seen people today, young people all over the place, excited and doing absolutely well. Mm -hmm. um, I've helped over 300 young people in the last three years to start mm -hmm. successfully, grow and become successful in their career through discovery um, in their businesses, through discovery of their talents and their purpose and their businesses. So, um, I mean, that's it. And do you know something funny most times is you, you're expecting something so big to come out to you like this is my purpose or this is what I'm called to do. There are times maybe you're just good at organizing your room, doing something well, and you don't even see that as big deals. You know, a lot of things you oh. don't see as big deal and you think that, oh, I'm not just talented or I'm not good at anything. But there is definitely one thing that you're doing that you're doing at its best. Just give that a Abs shot. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, 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 if whatever you are good at that others are struggling with is a big deal. Mm -hmm. For those of us listening right now, mm -hmm. whatever you are good at that others are struggling with is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Some people struggle, struggle with um, pressing their clothes. Mm -hmm. As simple as pressing their clothes. Yeah. But other people are so good. Probably you are good at uh, making clothes and others are struggling with it. It's a big deal. Mm. It's a big deal. So long as you are good at it, do not look down on it. Because like I said, everything is in phases. Yeah. Yeah. I knew I was good at encouraging people. Mm. I never knew I was going to be very good at public speaking. But I just knew that I knew how to give people advice. At my high school level, I would give people in my higher, people that are uh, my seniors in class, they will come around at a confused stage, at a little boy, and I'll give them some advice, give them some suggestion. 
Mm. It was a big deal for me as at that time that people who were my seniors in class had life challenges and they would come to me and I would say one or two things that they would come back and say, hey man, those things you told me, they've been amazing, they've helped me. Mm. And that I find joy getting those feedback. It was from those level that I developed and grew upon it to become the public, global public speaker that I am today. So if you know how to um, organize a room, trust me, there are people who their biggest their biggest challenge is how they can even organize their room some people is their wardrobe like they can they have crisis putting their wardrobe together yeah. if you know how to do that and with the power of social media you could just yeah. do just quick videos three minute videos hey guys this is how you put your your wardrobe together when you have um, when you have scattered the whole place yeah. and you don't know how many people will be so grateful to do that, to, to watch your videos and reach out to you. Do you know some people have crisis with even the kind of um, clothes to wear for different occasions? Yeah, but you just know how to pick them and, and, it, and it fits in. You just know how to pick yellow and red or you know how to pick blue navy suit with a red tie on a white inner, inner, inner shirt, right? And it goes so well. What is so easy for you is what some people, when they want to go out, they take days, in fact, they can <laughs> to, to, to pick these things. Guys, whatever you are going through as a challenge that you have overcome, a thousand and one people out there are going through it. If you could just own it, and help people experience it you could be you would be amazed mm. at how that can become a solution i know people who struggle with how to boil egg mm. they don't know how to boil egg mm. and some people go on youtube you will see they have yeah, they well, have millions of people yeah. watching that simple video that's to tell you that yeah. there are a million people out there who are struggling with knowing how to prepare yeah, egg yeah. boiled egg and they had to go to youtube to learn about it so guys whatever you are doing easily don't look down on it. There yeah. are people struggling with it yeah. and they will be willing to learn. Thanks a lot. I've really learned a lot from this and I enjoyed this conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on your yeah. podcast. Thank it's you really so much. Pleasure. And um, yeah, so um, you can connect with me. Can I Can I share my handle? Definitely, definitely. Oh, okay. Uh, so you can connect I, with I, me I on... Can... Yeah, I also put go it, ahead. I'll, I'll also put it on the description. Oh, you can oh okay that's fine you know. oh okay okay so so you can connect with me um on facebook and on linkedin is kingsley Ime. Mm -hmm. kingsley the normal spelling of kingsley king and then s l e y oh. kingsley Ime i m e on facebook or on linkedin that's my name while on twitter and on instagram is at real kingsley Ime. that's my full name then you add r e a l k-i-n-g-s-l-e-y-i-m-e -E, at real king slimy mm -hmm. all small letters mm -hmm. on instagram and on twitter and of course if you want to buzz me on my dms i'm very open for conversation you want to come into um, i do a lot of coaching sessions i call it icmc you know one-on-one -on -one coaching group coaching um um their, their calls uh, we do that virtually as well remember i run a company kingspire resources where mm -hmm. we specialize in business development and consulting helping you um grow your business from your mm -hmm. talents showing you how you can use your skill and create multiple streams of revenue from same talent and same skill so you can buzz me on my whatsapp plus two three four mm -hmm. plus two three four eight zero six three four seven one three three six plus two three four eight zero six three four seven one three three six that's my whatsapp number you can reach out to me at any point in time remember on facebook you could read a lot I, 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 I do a lot of business i talk a lot about business and career and of course success so my my timeline is filled with so much for you to feed yourself with so connect with me on facebook and on linkedin kingsley may and of course on instagram and twitter at Rio King Slimy and of course my WhatsApp plus two three four eight zero six three four seven one three three six. Thank you. Uh, guys do want to check that out and of course I believe you're gonna find his things interesting, his writing is interesting and the consultation. So uh coming to the end of this episode, I believe we've learned one or two things on identity and knowing that definitely even if you're not doing something right now, you're still 
putting yourself out as something like people still see you as a particular thing so why not just do your best and leave the world to be a better place instead of just um putting a uh, more burden on the world itself so i believe there is a little way we all can be of help to the world i believe there is a little way we can even serve our community to make it a better place and see you guys next week thank you for joining today's episode bye